it isn't just Facebook. A well-known internet service provider is coming clean, well to a certain extent, on the way it spies on us. Transparency has a nice sound to it, until you realize it is one more attempt to make the intolerable seem tolerable. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. It's not always easy picking a subject for this podcast. I have literally thousands of choices available to me each time. But this past Friday, I did not have to look far. The subject was waiting in my inbox, the AT&T Yahoo email on updated terms of service. These and similar companies publish new terms at their discretion, changing the rules of their agreement with you in a one-sided way. You either okay the new terms of service or part ways with your provider, saying goodbye to the intellectual property of your old emails, videos, or what have you. Most people never read the terms of service because they are so long and are written in lawyerese. But now, because of increasing public outrage, the companies are attempting to provide short, readable summaries instead of eliminating the unpopular provisions. I realize that by telling you this, I am tugging at Superman's cape. After all, the Man of Steel was counting on me keeping quiet. Anyway, let me read you a couple of bullet points explaining what Yahoo is doing under the latest update. Number one, analyzing content and information, including emails, instant messages, posts, photos, attachments, and other communications when you use our services. This allows us to deliver, personalize, and develop relevant features, content, advertising, and services. And number two, linking your activity on third-party sites and apps with information we have about you. There you have it, folks. They actually admit spying on us. Let me emphasize, this is from Yahoo's latest update. Although the AT&T logo appears on the email, its terms are not being changed at this time. However, this doesn't necessarily mean we're safe. I'd like to point out that the Yahoo summary says nothing about giving your private information to the government. But we know federal requests routinely ignoring our constitutional right to privacy are answered without question. Now, the Fourth Amendment goes like this. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Remember the phrase I mentioned earlier, intellectual property? We hear it all the time in reference to the Internet. Some people not only want to change the law so that you can't make a brief quotation in a post, but they want to ban links to articles as well. The interesting thing is that up to the mid-1970s, the work of all authors and artists was considered public domain unless the option to copyright was asserted. Since then, the default is for everything to be considered copywritten unless the originator gives up the right or the work otherwise qualifies as public domain. I don't know if anyone has ever applied this logic to emails and similar materials, but I submit that they are copywritten. That means no one can share your intellectual property without your permission or a warrant based on probable cause. But getting back to the AT&T Yahoo Terms of Service email, what can we do? If we don't agree to the Terms of Service, they can eventually cut us off. But are there other providers that actually respect our rights better? The other day I was talking to a friend about how the surveillance society of today is so much worse than Patrick McGowan's character experienced in the 1960s British TV series The Prisoner. In case you haven't heard about it before, he was an ex-secret agent who was kidnapped and wound up in this mysterious place called The Village, constantly under surveillance. And the big question was, why did he resign? McGowan summarized it this way. I am not a number. I am a free man. <laughs> the world has become the village of McGowan's nightmare. But back to my friend. 
Our conversation was before I got the Terms of Service email, so we were referring to Facebook. He pointed out, and very astutely, who would have thought that we'd freely provide the information used to harass us? This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. Thank you.